Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And today we've got a puzzle by none other than Kurt Hugo Schneider, a man whose YouTube channel makes our own seem absolutely puny. Let me show you what I mean here. Here you go. 13.2 million subscribers and um, reg regularly hitting huge numbers at the moment for playing things on household uh, utensils like washing machines and his security p code panel. Um, yeah, so Kurt is a very, very clever guy indeed, and we know him on the channel, not really from his music videos, um, but of course because he is something of a polymath. Um, he's a brilliant, brilliant chess player actually. There was some, a very entertaining video I watched the other day of him playing against Hikaru Nakamura, no less, um, which was which was incredible. Um, and yeah, he, he, he's one of those setters who gives me the fear. Uh, i.e. You, you know you're in the presence of greatness and you're probably going to be made to look stupid. Um, and what's more, look at what he's done today. He's given this puzzle an extra cracking the cryptic related flourish by creating C, T, well, and a backward C there to create um, sort of symmetrical logo type thing of cracking the cryptic in the middle of the grid, for which, yeah, that looks absolutely brilliant. Um, now, I've news today on our Kickstarter campaign as well, um, which hopefully you've seen. We announced a couple of days ago, and this is um, the idea we've had to create our very first book and how we're going to try and fund it is on Kickstarter. Uh, now, the planned launch for this is now tomorrow. Um, so look, here's the, here's the book cover. It might change slightly. We're gonna we may, may work on the man there a little bit, um, but yeah, this is this is going to go live tomorrow. Do check it out. We are very very excited about it. And also, please do keep dropping comments um, on this video. If you if you solved a puzzle or watch me solve a puzzle or Mark solve a puzzle on the channel, you think well that simply has to be in the book, then do let us know because we have. It's, it's an enormous number of puzzles we've been going through. It's something like fifteen or 1,600 puzzles and trying to select um, just our very favourites or, or the ones that we think would make, you know, make the best book is proving extremely difficult. Um, so, yeah, any help you would like to give us would be very welcome. Um, now, what else do I want to say? Anything? No, I don't think there's anything else to say. I just need to tell you the rules of this puzzle and they are very conventional. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, we've got some thermometers in the grid and they work normally, i.e. they mu you must increase digits away from the bulb end. So the bulb end contains the smallest digit and then you keep moving up as you get higher on the thermometer. And these clues outside the grid are standard little killer Sudoku clues, which means that, for example, this 47 is telling us that these cells here sum up to 47 and you can repeat digits along a little killer clue. So obviously those two squares couldn't be both Sorry, these two couldn't both be a nine because that would break the rules of Sudoku. But it's absolutely fine to have, you could have loads of nines actually. Look, look, you could have an absolute multitude of nines and then you could have to put one, one, zero into the balance, which wouldn't work. But, you know, the, the, the principle is there. You can repeat digits along the diagonal. I'm sure you all would know that already. Now, if you want to play this, and I definitely recommend it, Kurt's puzzles are always a joy. If somewhat tricky, the testing reports suggest this one is somewhat tricky. Um, uh, the way to play, of course, click the link under the video as usual. With that, I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, and the first thing I will note is that I do not think we can use these thermometers to start. I know there have been some incredible puzzles recently, most notably, I think, Mitchell Lee's extraordinary thermometer Sudoku, where there were very short thermometers, but they were there were a lot more thermometers than this, even in that puzzle. So I do think that we're going to have to do some, probably some trickery with the diagonals. Um, let's just check this one. This is the biggest clue Okay, so that's a little bit interesting. Eight cells with a total of 57 means we are averaging to over seven in the yellow cells. But even so, you know, you could have you could even have a couple of ones, I think, on this diagonal and just a few nines to make up the balance and you'd be OK. Um, hmm, so I don't think we're going to get anywhere there. Now... 44 no i mean the long diagonal averaging to four well 44 we're averaging just under five not interesting so i think i think what we're intended to do here is to somehow 
we're either going to have to combine well, we're going to have to combine something. I'm pretty sure about that. Let's let's have a look at the left-hand side. Let's actually just combine all of these clues because I can see that that's going to it's going to give us a pattern I've seen before in a little killer. I remember this. Um, now, the thing that's interesting about these purple squares to me is that they aren't radically different. They are different, but they're not radically different from the context or the contents of boxes one, five, and nine. So these purples add up to 148. Whereas I know that this box plus this box plus this box will add up to 135 because it will be three lots of 45. And we know that any box of a Sudoku, in fact, any row, any column, if you looked at the finished solution, this box would contain the digits one to nine. So we know that the box therefore adds up to 45. That's what you get when you add up those numbers. So, so how can I convert, convert 148 into 135? I have to, I'm going to have to add in those. Okay, I'm going to have to add in these six cells, aren't I? Those need to add in. And these ones need to come out because they are not part of, um, of boxes 1, 5 and 9. So, okay, so now what have we got? We've got, we've got 100, and, was it 148 or 149? 100, and, oh, I'm going mad, 148. We've got 148 plus the greens minus the orange equals 135. In other words, greens, greens plus 13 equal orange which is weird because it's sort of the wrong way round there are six greens there so so actually we can say that oranges have to be quite big you don't want to put too much in the green or you won't be able to make the oranges large enough and that's quite interesting as well because like this square has to be higher than than the orange that it's on the thermometer with. Hmm. But the problem the problem with this is that the gap is not big enough. So let's just think about this. What's the absolute maximum we could make these oranges? That could be uh, if we make that. Oops. If I make that a nine. This now can't be eight, look, because that would put a nine there. So that could be seven. This this can't be eight or nine. That could be seven because, oh no, it can't be seven. It has to be six, seven, eight, nine. And that one can be nine. So in, in other words, the maximum I could make the oranges is 25, 31. And what was the difference? 13. Oh no, this actually this can't be nine because that would be nine then. Oh, that's interesting. Look, there is, there's all sorts of stuff going on around this central region. So now we've got 16 and 14, which is 30. And we had 148 minus 135, which is 13. So the, the greens, The greens have to be 17 or less. Problem is, even though that one is restricted, look, that has to be a nine. So these would have to add up to eight. There is a lot of... Yeah, I mean, I'm sensing that these greens have to be very low well they do have to be very low they just do but the problem is I'm not quite sure how to how to limit these because Yeah, I'm not being very articulate either. What what I'm thinking, you know, for example, making this square a six. 
I mean, this squ square could still be, it could still be five. This one could still be nine then. So th the actual options among these squares are still, you know, you could have two eights here and that would still work with having nine here. Although then that one might break. This is interesting. There's definitely something going on. And my feeling is that these, these greens in the perimeter here are going to have to be very small digits. Let me just double check this again. So, oh, is there any way to make it work if this isn't a nine? If this is an eight, this is an 8 and that's a 9 now and this becomes a 7 oh that's interesting as well because that becoming a 7 helps with the greens oh good grief 6 5 that would have to be 4 and then this could be 9 and now you'd have a situation where you've got 16 25 29 Oh, that's bizarre. So this is not fruitful. Ah, that's so frustrating. So so you can see now that what we've got here is 29 in the, as the oranges. We've got 7 plus the 13 gap, which is 20. So we now need these to add up to 9, which is easier than it was before. So as we reduce this down, we give ourselves more flexibility here. Oh no, this is this is this isn't going to work. This is not enough. Um, okay. So what do we do? <laughs> um, and if we do these ones, maybe these add up to a different number. If we go. Ah, 147 that way. So I was thinking maybe we could have used this, these three diagonals and we'd have got, we'd have got a better restriction, but in fact we get an almost identical restriction. Oh, if in doubt in a, a little killer Sudoku, highlight everything. Let's highlight everything and see what that shows us. Um, but this is clear, there's clearly something very clever going on. As usual, Kurt's making me feel like a complete dunce. Um, ah, so that's interesting as well now. So, so what this looks like, apart from a big X, is that we've got... Yeah, we've got sort of five complete boxes almost covered by... Oh, but the combination is tricky here because, of course, the sum of these, the 148 plus the 147, double counts some squares in the middle. These squares here are included in both counts. Ah, so that is not helpful at all. So what we'd be doing then is we would have, if we were looking to, We're looking to create five complete boxes. So we're comparing 148 plus 147 is 295. So we're comparing 295 with five complete boxes of the Sudoku, which is 225, 45 times 5. So the difference was 70. So we're saying that we've got to add in all these squares. Oh, this is going to get so complicated and remove these squares and we've also double counted we've double counted these squares so these need to be these need to be removed i think so they would they do stay orange oh good grief i've got no clue what this means this is So we'd have 70. Seventy, so yeah.
70 plus greens equal oranges is I think what we end up with. Uh, you know what we could do though that might be better? Ah, yeah, I, mean, I think I'm going to, I think I prefer what I'm about to do rather than double counting. Yeah. Okay. So what I was trying to do was to use five complete boxes of the Sudoku to double count, which double counts this cross. But what if instead I compared my 295 with six complete boxes of the Sudoku and I double count the middle box? because I've already double counted this cross. So then I've got to add in these corners. Now, why is that interesting to me? Well, that now I've managed to get an awful lot of cells on these thermometers. So these are all interrelated, whereas they aren't when I use these. Now, Just noticed I've got no, I've not even got a pencil mark in the grid after 15 minutes. Um, so now if I do this, I'm not comparing to 225 anymore. I need another 45. So I'm comparing to 270. So the difference between 295 and 270 is 25. Now, let me just be very precise about what I'm saying here. I must be saying that the 25 plus all of these greens in the grid and there are now 12 greens in the grid 25 plus 12 greens equals oranges and there are only eight oranges and and this is where it gets really interesting because now these two greens are definitely bigger than two oranges on This is fascinating because now we've got all sorts of tensions going on. You know, the gut reaction is that you need to keep the greens as small as possible, given that the tw greens get an extra 25 as well to be made up by less squares, being the only eight oranges. But, but these greens... Uh, I don't know. Anyway, what I think we should do now, let us have a look. If I make all of the greens as small as I can, those ones are all obvious. They've got to be ones and twos. Now, these are not obvious. Um, oh, banging noise outside. Um, so if I try and keep these greens as low as I can, if this was a one, two, three, four, that could be a five. Oh no, this car, oh, I keep forgetting that these these thermometers play a part. So if this is one, two, this can't be th two. This has to be three, four, five, six. So the minimum I could put in here was six, but then this one can't be one, two, or three. This has to be four, five, and this can't now be six. So this has to be seven, eight. Right, so here we go. We've now got the absolute minimum. And I don't know which way round this would go. Obviously, this could be the one and this could be the two. But I think this is the minimum I could put in the greens. And I've got uh, the three, I've got 12 round the edge. 22. 29, I think I've got. So I've got 29. Plus the 25 I had before. Oh, this is getting complicated. 54. So I need the oranges to equal 54. So we've got, what have we got here? We've got 8, 19. So these have to equal, no, they, they have to equal 35. That, oh, good grief. Oh, no, now I'm in trouble. Now I'm in trouble. They have to equal 35. But I can't use... You know, I can't use three nines and an eight in those four squares because the nines will definitely clash. The maximum I could make these squares is 34. So I can't, this doesn't work. So, 
I'm wondering now if I've got my arithmetic wrong because that is not meant to happen. So I can't make the greens low enough that the Ah, no, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Sorry, sorry. As usual, Kurt is, he's playing with me here. This is, um, oh, oh, this is weird as, look, these two squares are green. So my inclination was to keep the greens down in order to try to limit the size of 25 plus the greens. But when I keep these down, the problem with that is that that affects all four of these oranges. All, if you like, these greens do double duty. They don't just restrict one orange cell, they restrict two orange cells. So actually, it might be better to try and increase the value of these. Now, that in turn is not straightforward <laughs> because by increasing the value of these I potentially disrupt the value of these orange squares oh good grief this is complicated so I think well I think what we have to do is say that we know that this is wrong we know that these these are a one two pair we don't know these are a one two pair but I'm strongly suspicious these are a one two pair because I'm already having trouble keeping these greens small enough or to put it another way keeping the oranges big enough so let's try it again now but this time I'm going to try and maximize the value of these in order that it allows me to maximize the value of those so this is like a game we're playing with we need to discover the optimum strategy for maximizing the oranges and minimizing the greens, given that the oranges and greens are interrelated in all of these places. And I'm sure there is a mathematical way of doing this efficiently, but I'm not going to find it in my head. So let me try and do it using um, using on the fly logic. We've got, so if this is nine, eight, the best I can do with these would be six and seven. Therefore, the best I could do with those be oh no it, it gets complicated again in fact I'm just going to pick one because I think otherwise I might make a mistake doing this seven that could be six five four now this could be six and that could be five okay does that look like anything is broken there I don't think so Now that would then be 7 and 8, and this would be 7 and 9. So hopefully this will at least work, and it will give us something to, to work on. So I'm just double-checking it. So now let's check what we've got now. In terms of the greens, we've got 12, 15, 15 and 17 is 32, plus the 25 is 57 so now I've got to get I've got to get these oranges to equal 57 and this time we've got 16 and 15 is 31 oh, I'm never gonna get there oh my oh this doesn't work either 60 31 I thought I had to get 57 that's another 26 I'm nowhere near Uh, well, if I can't if I can't minimize these and I can't maximize them, what am I meant to do? Oh no, no, I see, I see what I have to do. Oh, this is weird. This is weird. Look, this eight. I don't need this to be an eight. Oh, this is really interesting. If I make this a seven, it has two positive effects. Not well, it has lot. Actually, it has loads of positive effects. The first positive effect 
is it slightly reduces the value of the greens, which is always a good thing. The second positive effect is it allows me to put an 8 in this column, which is one better than it was before. So that's the second positive effect. The third positive effect is a double positive effect. And this is going to close the gap because now I've not affected this side of the equation. This is still possible for this to be 654, but this now can be 8. And that can be 7 and this can be 6. So I, give, I pick up 2 here, 1 here and 1 here. And this should close the gap, I think. Maybe. So let's just check this. So now, now my green's adding up to 15 and 16, 31. My, so 31 plus 25 is 56. And now I need my oranges to add to 56. And this time I've got 17 and 15 is 32. So I need 24 and I've got it, 24. Okay, that is, that is the only way this is going to work. I say that very confidently. We have to, we have to make these as large as we can. We have to make these as small as we can, subject to the fact that we need these to be large. So we actually need these to be quite large, but the trick is to put a seven in here rather than an eight. And this, well, this this is helpful-ish because, of course, I don't know which way round these thermometers go. <laughs> so I've got to delete them. I've got to delete these thermometers and put in options. Now, the, the good thing is I know what the options are. This is 9-7. This is 6-8. This is 5-7. Whoops. This was 4 and 6, I think. Uh, and I don't know which way around this this seven and nine go. So this could be eight nine, but could it could also be seven eight, and this could be seven eight or eight nine. So we actually well we've made progress, but it's not it's not that. Uh, it's probably 27 minutes. I still haven't got a digit. Uh, this is going to be a long one today. Um, but I must be... I must be close to getting something. Oh, this is... I've got a digit. I've just got a digit. Look at this. Look at the ones and the twos. Now, because of this one-two pair here, this... This has to be a one-two pair, just looking at the interaction of all these squares. Well, look, this is a little thermometer, so you can't put a one at the end of a thermometer. So this must be two, this must be one. And that is going to not only give me one digit, it's going to give me loads of digits. And I must get this pair as well, I think, by the same logic. So there must be a 1 and a 2 in here, and a 1 and a 2 in here. And I definitely don't feel like I'm cooking with gas, but at least I've got something. Now, 6s are interesting. Look, there's an X-wing on 6s in these positions. Or another way of saying that is, where, six, where can 6 go in the middle box? It clearly can't go in that row or this row, because there's a 6 pair in both of row 4 and row 6. So six is in one of these three squares and six can't go on the bulb of the thermometer because if it does, all three of those squares would have to be higher than six. So they'd have to be seven, eight and nine and that would definitely clash with the six there. So six is in one of these peripheral cells. Um... Oh, hang on. Where does 8 go in the middle box? Sorry, this has been sitting here for a few minutes now. There can't be an 8 in there. This is a 789 triple, and this is a 789 triple. So there can't be 8s in any of those squares. You can't. We can't put an 8 here, because if this was an 8, this would have to be a 10, and that doesn't work. So I think this has to be an 8. Now, if this is an 8, that must be higher than an 8. What's higher than an 8? A 9. Things you learn on Cracking the Cryptic. So... 
So this is a 7 8 pair. Oh, where does 5 go in the middle box now? Oh, we are starting to get somewhere here. Must go there. So this must be 3, 4 and 6 to complete the central box. We know the 6 isn't in the middle. Oh, in fact, in fact, we know, of course, we know more than that. Given one of the, you know, given we have to put a three on this line, the three must be the lowest digit. So the three is on the bulb. So we've actually done quite well in the central row. We've got an eight, nine pair at the ends. We've got a three, uh, is that a th yeah, three, four pair at the ends of there. And here we've got three, five, seven, nine into these squares. Three, five, seven, nine. Uh, okay. So. Okay, sorry, I'm now stuck. I mean, I presume at some point I'm going to have to use the diagonals again, but not as a collection, probably as individually or as a... Um, I can't see any more Sudoku to do here. Now that's... That's not saying there isn't any Sudoku to do. There probably is, and I'm not spotting it, but I'm not seeing it here. So, now, do we have any limitation? I'm not seeing anything brilliant. The problem with these three squares is they average to very close to five. Um, same in this direction. 57 should be high. These look like they're approximately high. Uh, ah, I've got something. I've got another bit of Sudoku. Look at this column. Where does 1 and 2 go? So I think these two squares are a one-two pair because you can't put ones and twos in any other of the open positions. So that's something. So now we need four, six, and seven to complete this column. So four, six, seven. Absolutely useless. <laughs> oh dear. Right, so let's have a, I think I'm going to look at a triple again. So I'm going to look at one of these diagonals. I don't know whether it should be this one or this one. Um, I'm not sure it makes a great deal of difference. So we'll look at this one. Uh, this is taking in all of these squares. which is hard to see, but hopefully it's pretty clear. It's this diagonal, this diagonal, and this diagonal. Yeah, okay, this might work actually because... Well, yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. Let's. I'm gonna just select a value for this. I'm gonna go with nine. Now, if this is 9, we know this is 7. We know this is 6, 5, 4. We know this is 8, 7, uh, 6. Now, now if we stare at this diagonal again, now we can do better. We can keep going. 8, 7, 9, 8. So now, if we look at this diagonal, we know all the unknowns on it, apart from this square, don't we? We do. We know all the unknowns on it. So we know that this added to 147. So 
how are we going to turn that 147 into the 135 represented by this box, this box, and this box? What we're going to do is we're going to add in these squares, these two squares, and these two squares. So that's 6, thir we're adding 13, so 140, oh, I'm getting confused now, 147 plus 13 is 160 plus either a 1 or a 2. So it's either 161 or 162. So that's greater than 30, 135 oh, by 26 or 27, isn't it? And that 26 or 27 has to be made up of, oh, uh, this doesn't work. It has to be made up of those two squares plus those two squares because they are the outies. They are included in the diagonal total but not in the boxes. And that 16 plus 12 is 28. That does not work. Well, that might be good. That might mean this has to be a 7, but I don't... Yeah, the thing is I'm having to do so much arithmetic in my head here that I could be making mistakes right, left and centre, and that is going to be very bad if so. Let's let's go with 7 here and see if we get the same problem. 9, 8, 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, 8, 7, 9... Eight. So this time, looking at the diagonals again, we've we've got we've got our six here. This time plus nine, so we've got fifteen onto one hundred and forty-seven. That's one hundred and sixty-two. So it's either one hundred and sixty-three or one hundred and sixty-four that we're now heading for. Either one hundred and sixty-three or one hundred and sixty-four. So we need either uh, 163, we are looking for 28 or 29. And we've got to make that out of 15 and 30. 28, 28 works. Oh, that is good. 15, 28, that does work. So I have to make this a one. Now let's just sorry and sorry to be for being incredibly boring and methodical about this, but um, it does strike me that there is ample opportunity here to make errors. So I am going to just double or triple check here. So 147, 150, 153, 162, 163, 163 minus 135 is definitely equal to 28. And 15 plus 13 is definitely equal to 28. So I think we are on the right track. Now we can remove two from there. We can remove one from here. We can remove two from there and one from here. Uh, okay. <laughs> is this... No, I must get more than this from this. Come on. Ah! Oh, there's a naked single here. There's a 4, 5, 6 and a 7, 8, 9 looking at this square. Obviously with the 1 and the 2. That's got to be a 3. So the... Ah, that's a 7. Same thing. This square here has got to be a 7, 8 or a 9 by Sudoku. And there's an 8, 9 in the row. So this is a 7. This is not 7. Uh, that's good. That's not 7. So there's a 4, 6 pair in column 5. This is a 7. 7 must be in one of these two squares. These three squares to complete row 8 have got to be 4, 5 and 6. That's not 6. This thermometer, I think, is just there to maintain the symmetry with this one. This had this beautiful trick with the ones and the twos on it. This one, I think, is just here so that the grid looks symmetrical. Um, this is an 8-9 pair. 
three, three, four, five, six into these squares. Let's have a look at this. Three, four, five, six. This is not six. That's a little interesting. Look at that. Where does the nine go in column three? Well, it goes in one of those two squares. Where does the nine go in column seven? It goes in one of those two squares. Now that might matter, you know, because that this X-wing pattern. Sorry to, I, I know a number of you are very familiar with X-wings, but what does it mean? Um, well, if in the finished solution we saw there was a nine in this square we know there would be a 9 in this square because the 9 can only go in one of two positions in column 3 so if, if there's a 9 here there can't be a 9 here and in column 7 there can't be a 9 here so there'd have to be a 9 on this slash of the X and vice versa if this is a 9 you'd have to have a 9 here so we know that therefore there is no 9 in any of these squares in the finished solution now why does that matter well you can see that these squares in particular and these squares and these squares so not the squares in boxes 2 and 8 these squares affect the diagonals totals so is there a place where we'd really like there to be a 9 where there can't now be one actually you know what this 54 diagonal would love a 9 because it's only got 7s and 3s and 2s on it. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to look at this diagonal. This diagonal looks interesting. I'm not just not sure how to notate it. Can I make that? I'll make those grey. So these grey squares, grey means cannot be a nine. So is there anything else we can do here to limit the nines? There might be, you know, there's a little 8 there. That's got to be a 9. That's got to be an 8. It's not, it's not amazing, but it does mean on the 54 diagonal, this can't be a 9 either. And it means on the 54 diagonal, the, see the 54 diagonal, that looks less promising, doesn't it? We've already got three 8s and the option of an 8 or a 9 in this square. Yeah, okay, I'm definitely going to focus on this one. So, how can we make this 54 diagonal work? We've got 14, 19 so far. Now, the biggest digits I can put in, that can be a 9, unfortunately. This can't be, though. Ah, that's interesting. That is fascinating. If this is a 9, that square is an 8 by Sudoku. There's a 7 in the box, so the best you can do in that square is a 6, actually. So if that's 9, 9, 6, that can be 5. This can't be 9 because of the X-Wing, and it can be 8. This can't be 9, and if this is 8, this can be 7. So the best I do down here is 15, 20, 25, 39... 54. 54 is, is the absolute maximum. So I have to use maximums. I have to use maximums. Now, does it have to be 9, 6 here? If this is not 9, I can't put 9 here. Can I make this 7, 8? No, there's a 7 in the box. So the only way of getting to 15 here is 9, 6, and the only way of it being 9, 6 is with the 9 in the corner. Nobody puts 9 in the corner, apart from me. Um, so we get 9, 6 here. We get 5 here. This must be maximal. Uh, we don't know which order this is in. This is a 7, 8 pair, but we don't know which way round it goes, unless there's a reason we do. Oh, we do, we do via this 9. Once this is a 9, that's an 8. 
which means that's a nut. Oh no, we don't know. I thought I was, ah. Um. Oh, I thought we were going to get that, but I'm not sure we do actually. So six comes out of there. Seven, eight pair here. This can't be five. Th oh, this must be four, look, because of the five here. This must be six. That gets rid of a six from this one. This gets rid of a... F gets rid of that one as well. Three, four, five, triple in row three. Means this must be a six. This must be a four. Four must be in one of these two cells. These squares have got to be... Ah, where does 4 go in box 3? It must go in the corner. This square must be a 3 or a 5. This is not 3 or 5. Still needs 7. Ah, where does 9 go in this column? It must go there. Oh, these two squares must be resolved. Yeah, we've got 3 here and that must be something else. 7. We can take 9 out of these. These become a 3. That gives us a 4. And I think I think we might be on the on the home stretch. I, I actually I do not know why I said that. So dumb. Uh, Fifty five and six here. Still don't know the orders of the ones and the twos. Six. Look, where does six go in box one? It's got to go right in the top corner. Where does 8 go in box 1? It's got to go here by Sudoku. That fixes the 8 and the 7 down here. Fixes the 7, 8 in box 9. 7 must go there by Sudoku. We still need to put a 9 into this box. Rather irritatingly, I don't think we know where it goes. Yes, we know, we know where it goes in column 3 though, because it can't go there. So it must go here. Whoa, what's that? nine somebody messaging me uh this square is a three or a five that gives us what's that a three five pair in this column this must be four once this is four this turns into a three five three five three four nine don't break now please three three and five up there those two squares have got to be four and five, I think. Don't know the order yet. And these squares have got to be one, two, and three. And again, don't know the order. So perhaps what we can do... Oh, look, yes, we're going to be able to use one of these diagonals. Let's use this one, 46. We've got 25, uh, 25, uh, 37, 40. This has got to be six. Perfect. Just think how tragic it would have been if I did that sum and it came out as not a digit that was possible. That would have been horrific. Um, now, if we got, yeah, we can do the same thing. Let's use the long diagonal here. That's going to be a good check as well, isn't it? We need this to be 44. We've got 14, 23, 20, uh, 23, 26, 27, 38. So that should be a six. Five must go there by Sudoku, which means this square is a given. That's going to be a three. Once this square is a three, that disambiguates all three squares at the top. It gives us a one here, a two here, and that should be a six. And I think, yes, I did it. <laughs> Long video. Not an easy puzzle, let me tell you. As usual, made to feel completely and utterly inadequate by Kurt Hugo Schneider. Happens every time. What can I say? Sorry. Um, yeah, but do check out the Kickstarter video tomorrow when that goes live. Um, it should be very exciting and obviously the Kickstarter page as well. Let us know about the puzzles you'd like to see. Maybe that indeed this might be one of them in the book. And um, yeah, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.